This video was made possible by Nazizi International, the official African diaspora clothing brand. Visit nazizishop.com for more information. It is no secret that East Africa plays a pivotal role in the arteries of global trade, serving as a crucial link between the resource-rich continent and the bustling markets of Asia, Europe, and the Americas. Its strategic location on the Red Sea and Indian Ocean has attracted maritime activity for centuries, and today, its modern ports and vital waterways handle a significant portion of the world's goods. Key to East Africa's maritime significance is its strategic ports, the ports of Djibouti, Mombasa, and Tanzania's port of Dar es Salaam. Given the sub-region's importance to maritime trade, a disruption in East African shipping could ripple far and wide, causing significant headaches for regional shippers and delays in global supply chains. And this is exactly what is happening after recent attacks on ships in and near the Red Sea by Yemen's Houthi rebels have affected some of the world's top shipping and oil companies. Who are the Houthi rebels? Why are they hell-bent on disrupting international shipping? What effects are their actions having on East African shippers and international shipping, and what is being done to stop them? Join us in today's video as we shed more light on these questions in great detail. Before we dive into our topic today, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channels and ringing the bell to be notified about all our exciting future videos. East African ports should expect slower traffic in the coming days after increased attacks on ships by rebels passing through the Red Sea on their way to the western end of the Indian Ocean. This means that traders using the Mombasa and Dar es Salaam ports, for example, may face higher costs as shipping lines avoid the shorter route to avoid attacks. Major shipping companies have been compelled to divert ships from the Red Sea and Suez Canal to the Cape of Good Hope at the southern tip of Africa instead raising the cost of cargo on board. According to Mr. Gilbert Laggett, CEO of the Shippers Council for Eastern Africa, SCEA, members should expect cargo destined for the region's ports to be affected because they depend on transshipment. The return of containers and our exports will be delayed. But for imports, the supply chain will be affected for transshipment since most of the motherships pass through the channel in Yemen to other ports where medium vessels pick cargo to Mombasa and Dar es Salaam ports, he said. The rebel attacks have also put car dealers in Kenya under a great deal of stress as they race to import vehicles whose year of manufacture is older than 2016 before December 31st. 2023 deadline makes their importation unacceptable. According to sources, two ships carrying some of the Kenyan vehicles have been diverted to take a longer route, which could take an additional 13 to 14 days. For these car dealers, any delay in arrivals means that old cars will be shipped out of the country, as the Kenya Bureau of Standards has already issued warnings and guidelines under the eight-year rule that prohibits older vehicles from entering Kenya. All of these disruptions to East African shipping and international maritime trade are due to attacks by none other than the infamous Houthi rebels. The Houthis, officially known as Ansar Allah, or Supporters of God, are a Zaidi Shia, Islamist political and military group that emerged in Sada governorate, Yemen, in the 1990s. Predominantly made up of Zaidi Shias, a distinct minority in the Sunni-majority country, they draw their leadership from the Houthi tribe. Their origins lie in the grievances of the marginalized Zaidi community facing economic neglect and political exclusion by the Sunni-dominated government. Founded by Hussein Badreddin al-Houthi, a charismatic religious leader, the movement initially focused on social and religious revival but later turned political, demanding greater representation and an end to discrimination. In 2004, clashes erupted between the Houthis and the government, sparking the Houthi insurgency. Years of sporadic conflict culminated in the Houthis seizing the Yemeni capital Sana'a in 2014, sending the internationally recognized government fleeing. This triggered the ongoing civil war, drawing in regional powers like Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, who launched a devastating military intervention against the Houthis in 2015. In recent years, the Houthis have gained notoriety for their drone and missile attacks and humanitarian catastrophes. 
And now the Houthi rebels have waded into the Israel-Hamas war. The Houthis, backed by Iran, which also backs Hamas, claim to be aiding Palestinians in Gaza who are under Israeli siege. They have entered the Israel-Hamas conflict by attacking ships in vital shipping lanes and even attacking Israel with drones and rockets. The majority of Houthi attacks have targeted ships with Israeli connections, including several owned by the Ofer family, one of the world's most powerful shipping dynasties. These attacks on commercial and military ships potentially connected to Israel are, according to Houthi officials, aimed at pressuring Israel to end its war on Gaza. However, the group has subsequently attacked several random vessels passing through the Bab al-Mandeb Strait, a narrow passageway leading into the Red Sea and then to the Suez Canal. The Red Sea and Suez Canal account for 30% of global container ship traffic and about 15% of the world's shipping passes through the Suez Canal, the shortest route between Europe and Asia and other African countries in the Western Indian Ocean Belt. Unfortunately, the Houthis control Yemen's Red Sea coastline, strategically placing them at the Bab el-Mandeb Strait, a narrow choke point for global shipping, allowing them to launch attacks with relative ease and plunging international maritime trade into uncertainty. Currently, the Houthis' Red Sea attacks transcend mere Gaza support, offering them military prowess showcase, pressure on regional rivals, economic leverage via disrupted trade, and domestic recruitment boost, solidifying their position as a potent force in Yemen and the region. So how devastating have the Houthi rebels' actions been on global shipping? Although the Houthis claim to be targeting Israeli vessels only, the world's top 10 container shipping lines, including Hapag Lloyd, MSC, and Maersk, oil major BP, and tanker group frontline, FROOO are refusing to make the journey through the Red Sea for fear of indiscriminate attacks, leaving only smaller, niche operators to navigate the treacherous waters. These major carriers have instead opted for the arduous reroute through southern Africa's Cape of Good Hope, leading to delays. Also, several ships have turned off the signals allowing them to be tracked from afar in an attempt to throw off would-be Houthi attackers, making vessels harder to track. Furthermore, insurance costs have skyrocketed, with rates for Israeli-linked vessels soaring by a staggering 250%, while some insurers refuse coverage altogether. This intricate web of delays, extended voyages, opaque visibility, and a selective carrier pool translates to a domino effect. Essential goods arrive later, importers grapple with logistical nightmares, and consumers may face ripple effects in the form of price hikes. Thankfully, a lot is being done to stop these rebels and return international maritime trade to normalcy. On Monday, December 18, 2023, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd J. Austin Aerae announced Operation Prosperity Guardian, a naval operation to defend ships. This is an international challenge that demands collective action, he said of the Houthi attacks. Operation Prosperity Guardian is bringing together multiple countries, including the United Kingdom, Bahrain, Canada, France, Italy, the Netherlands, Norway, Seychelles, and Spain to jointly address security challenges in the Southern Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden with the goal of ensuring freedom of navigation for all countries and bolstering regional security and prosperity. The United States has also imposed sanctions on 13 alleged financiers of the Houthis in a bid to weaken the group. As Houthi attacks cast a shadow over vital East African and global maritime arteries, the world watches with bated breath to see if international efforts like Operation Prosperity Guardian and targeted sanctions can hold the key to restoring normalcy. The stakes are high, disrupted shipping translates to delayed essentials, inflated costs, and economic strain for millions. The global battle against the Houthis is not just a distant geopolitical skirmish, it's a fight for the smooth flow of trade that keeps our shelves stocked and our lives running smoothly. The success of these measures will determine if international shipping, and with it, global economic stability, can navigate the choppy waters of the Red Sea and return to normalcy. So what do you make of the disruptions the Houthi rebel group have inflicted on international maritime trade? 
Let us know what you think in the comments section below. And as always, do subscribe to the New Africa channel for more informative future videos.